Here's a fat quarter friendly weekend project that's great for beginners wanting to get a feel for quilting without taking on a large project. It's also a quick topper for seasoned quilters who want to experiment with different fabrics. In this video you'll get directions for making this topper while learning about quarter square triangles and how they're different from half square triangles. You'll also get some tips for choosing fabrics. Ready to begin? To make this top, you'll need a quarter yard each of three different fabrics. This is a great time to use a focal fabric as a guide for choosing the other material. At the end of the video, you'll find more tips for choosing your fabric. I've added the fabric requirements for larger runners and for adding borders on these supply lists. You'll find these lists below along with the link to these directions. Always make sure your fabric's been pressed before cutting. You'll start off by cutting squares. Make sure their edges are on the straight of grain and the cross grain. You'll need three eight and a half inch squares. Cut two sides. Turn, place the two trim sides at the eight and a half mark and cut. To speed up cutting four four and a half inch squares, I folded the fabric into fourths. Cut the two sides, I'll flip this around, line up the edges, and trim. Here's my four squares. Next, you'll cut these triangles. They have two equal sides and one longer side. If you put four of these together, they form a square. That's why they're called quarter square triangles. This square has been cut on the straight of grain and cross grain so that the longer side of each triangle doesn't stretch. And this is what you want on the outside edge of your runner. Right now you might be thinking that these quarter square triangles look a lot like these half square triangles, and you're right. However, if this square is cut on the diagonal, your straight of grain lies on these two edges. The bias which stretches a lot, is on this outside edge. And you don't want this side to fall on the outside edge of your runner. It can cause wavy edges and your runner won't lie flat. Like half square triangles, there's a formula that quilters use to cut out quarter square triangles. You just add an inch and a quarter to this side, cut a square, and then cut it on both diagonals. Easy, right? The tricky part is finding this measurement. We know that the finished size of this block is four inches, so this side is four inches. Since these two are the same, this is also four inches. To find the third side of any right angle triangle, we can use this formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I plugged in these four inch measurements here, and squared them and came up with 16 plus 16 equals 32. I know that c squared equals 32. In order to find this side's measurement, I have to find the square root of 32, which happens to be 5.656. To calculate the size of the square that needs to be cut, I have to add an inch and a quarter. I end up with 6.906, .06, which is about 6 and 7 eighths inches. I'll need to cut a square 6 and 7 eighths inches and then cut on the diagonal to get these triangles. Another way to calculate the cutting size of the square for these triangles is to multiply this side, which is 4 inches, by 1.414. You end up with 5.656. Then you'll add an inch and a quarter to account for the seam allowances. You'll cut a square 6 and 7 to 8 inches on both diagonals to get four of these triangles. If this looks familiar, you're right. This is a shortcut to the earlier process. Another way to calculate these triangle cutting sizes is to look up tables like this on the internet. But I don't always trust these tables. I'm a fan of figuring this out on my own using one of these two formulas my 6 and 7 8 inch square. Make sure to cut those diagonals precisely from tip to tip 
in order to double check my cutting, I like to line these tips up on the 45 degree lines on my cutting mat. Line up the ruler and then cut. Repeat on the other side. And here's four triangles for the ends. Now I cut all three of these squares at once, but when cutting diagonals, I find it best to cut one at a time. Lay out your runner. The squares are turned to kind of look like diamonds. This setting is called on point. Sew the triangles to the small squares. Put right sides together. Pin, making sure to match this edge and this edge. Sew a quarter inch seam and then press towards the triangle. Take the second triangle, put right sides together, making sure to match these two edges and stitch a quarter inch seam. Notice you'll have these little ends here, but don't worry about them for now. After sewing, press to the triangle. You'll end up with four units like this. Use your scissors or rotary cutter to trim off those little ears. Lay out your table runner again. Put right sides together. Pin. Stitch a quarter inch seam starting in the corner. Press to the green. Please note that these units might look alike, but they're actually the mere image of each other. Lay out your runner. Start in the middle row. Put right sides together and pin. Make sure to match up these two edges. Press your seam toward the square and return to your layout. Put right sides together matching edges and sew. Always press to the square. And now to the first row. Put right sides together and sew. To add the end piece, I fold my square in half, make a little crease mark at the midpoint, put right sides together and match the seam with the midpoint. You'll have little ears on both sides. So a quarter inch seam and then press. Put the third row together in the same manner. To add these corners, fold your square in half from seam to seam and crease. Put right sides together, matching midpoints. Pin and stitch. Press and trim these little ears. You'll have a quarter inch seam allowance between the edge and the ends of your squares. Add the corner on the other end in the same manner. When sewing diagonal rows, you want to match the intersections first. Put right sides together, match this intersection, pin and then stitch a quarter inch seam. After stitching, press. Add the third row in the same manner. At this point, you might decide you want to add a border. For a three inch border, you'll cut strips three and a half inches. Line up your strips in the center and cut both pieces this length. Put right sides together and pin. I find it easiest to pin on the pieced side so I can see the points when I sew. Stitch and press to the border. Measure through the center and cut both pieces this length. Put right sides together, pin and stitch. And here's my completed top. As I said earlier, using a focal fabric to choose the other two is a good plan. Try to stick with small prints for the triangles and four squares, and then medium prints for the larger squares. If using a larger print like this, you might have to do some fussy cutting. For example, if I want to use this print and I just cut eight and a half inch squares, I'll miss some of this flower. I'd have to adjust this accordingly in order to get that flower in each section. Another word of caution here, stripes and other directional fabric can be used, but you'll have to make some adjustments. For example, this square looks out of place but if I turn it in the same direction as the others, it'll be okay. If using directional fabric for the triangles, you'll want to make a template instead of using that quarter square triangle rule. All the triangle print should go in the same direction, and you can see that these two go in opposite directions. So you'll have to cut each one of these out individually. Since this is such a small project, why not take a chance and experiment with different combos Use alternate squares in the center and on the sides. Try a fabric that might not match exactly, but adds a little fun. Hope you decide to try this project. Send us a photo and we'll post it in our gallery.
Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos with your friends. If you're interested in more quick and easy table runners where you learn specific quilting skills, check out the links below. Thanks.